fabulous. Good. All right, we're recording. Okay. So welcome to our session today. Uh, we're, today we're going to be running a little bit of a workshop so you have a chance to dive a little deeper into augmented reality and have some hands-on experience yourself. And we're going to be experimenting with a few different AR applications that allow you to have those experiences as well as engage in content creation. So today I'm joined by my colleague, Helen Cardias menes who is our project officer for New South Wales. And Helen's been working with us to help support teachers in digital technologies across the country and particularly in New South Wales. And I'm uh, Rebecca Vivian and I'm a research fellow and uh, work on learning design projects for CESA in digital technologies, particularly around our teacher training programs. And so today we'd just like to let you know about the tools. So if you're not too familiar with Zoom, we have um, the option to mute or you can unmute if you'd like to ask a question. You can stop your video or have your video camera turned on if you'd like to at any point. And we also have a chat feature here. So if you have any questions or comments as you're moving through, feel free to pop them into the chat and we'll get to them shortly. You can also react. So you've got a little reaction button there where you know, if you like something, let us know um, if you think it's hilarious or, or a little shocked face if you're maybe confused um, and we can just keep an eye on that. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather here today, um, particularly the land of the Ghana people on which I'm joining you from today which I live and work on. And I'd like to recognize and pay my respects to their connection to the land, water and community. And I pay my respects to their elders past, present and those who are emerging. So today's session, we've started with a little bit of an icebreaker for those of you who were waiting. Um, we'll come back to that shortly and look at what it means. Um, we're also going to be looking at what is augmented reality and we're going to be looking at ways that you can use augmented reality in the classroom. And that includes examples of lots of different applications across learning areas and um, ones that you can use to have students create their own content. Um, then we're going to get you doing a little bit of a hands-on creation session. Uh, Helen is going to walk us through a tutorial using Metaverse. And this is a fantastic application that you can try with your students or you can even create your own AI experiences for your students. Then we'll be also looking at where to next. So you'll have a host of resources that we're going to get to at the end that can point you into directions for further learning, um, as well as more classroom ideas, as well as um, touching on our lending library equipment that you can use, which is free to borrow for schools. And then we'll end with some time for questions as well. So we might start today by just finding out where everyone's joining from. So we have a map of Australia here. And if you can use the annotation tools, um, then we'd love you to stamp yourself on the map just to let us know where you're joining from. So if we go into, if you go at the top of your uh, screen there, you'll see view options. And then if you navigate down to near the bottom, you can see annotate. And if you click on annotate, um, you can have a little toolbar opens. And that means you can stamp, you can draw little icons onto the screen. So you can stamp, you can circle, um, you can write some text. We'd love to just let you know where, let us know where you're from. So I've just stamped myself there. Oops, a little bit high, but I'm in Adelaide. <laughs> It's a great way to see that, you know, there are colleagues across the country that are also really keen to learn about digital technologies. And the one wonderful thing about our program is it brings people from across the country together. So um, within our MOOCs, we have learning communities where teachers can share activities and ideas. And um, 
that's the beauty of it is that you could be connecting with someone in WA and you're from Sydney. And um, same with our project offices, they will collaborate online and across these contexts so that uh, we can provide the best support to schools. Okay, so we can see we've got some great representation there around the um, south end. So we've got someone uh, from Tasmania even, I think that might be Pete. Um, and we've got some people from SA as well and New South Wales and Canberra. We've got Tony in the ACT, so thank you. All right, we'll clear that. And so if, if it's your first time joining one of our webinars, uh, we are the CESAR Digital Technologies Education Program. We run a range of support for schools and teachers, including uh, free massively open online MOOCs. So um, we have them covering artificial intelligence, digital technologies, cybersecurity, and more. We also run a free lending library where schools can borrow equipment. And we have some new exciting um, kits for AR and VR, which we'll let you know at the end of the session how you can engage with that. We also run professional learning events like these webinars and um, uh, school support as well. And we have a range of resources on our website. We've just updated that. So I um, encourage you to pop in. There's some support for families as well and um, classroom resources. Okay. So um, we started off with just a line as an icebreaker because we weren't sure how many people um, part of the meeting today had had some experience with um, AR and VR in the past. And this particular app is a nice, easy, fun one, I think, to um, you know, introduce and, and get your head around what augmented reality is. Um, I've just had a quick look in the um, Padlet and I might see if I can move that over. I don't know, can you see the Padlet on the screen? Oh, not yet. Not yet, okay, I'm just gonna reshare. It's just nice to see um, some of the different um, doodles that people have had in their spaces, which is lovely. Um, and so you can see with this particular example um, that what AR essentially does is provides a digital layer onto, I'm just going to share the presentation again. Okay. So what AR Can you see the presentation now? So what AR essentially does is it adds a digital layer onto um, your existing space. So here um, with Just Align, you can take a photo of your space, you can add a doodle onto it, um, you can record a video of it, you can um, clear your drawing, you can change your head size. And one of the things I love about this particular app is you can collaborate with others in your space. So AR, essentially is using technology to superimpose information onto the real world. So it really is the intersection of the digital world and the real world. So by adding that, adding that digital layer of content, um, it requires a trigger image. So that's either a QR code or um, some sort of um, space to um, promote that digital content um, to be shared. So can you guys see my screen? Because I'm getting a weird message on my end. I just need to flick that back to the slides. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Fabulous. So you can see with our examples here, we've got um, a $100 bill and then superimposed on top of that $100 bill is a digital image of a building. Um, the one in the middle is a app called um, uh, Quiver um, and basically with Quiver it's a colouring in page so a student might colour in um, the image and then use the Quiver app to turn that image into a digital 3D layer of content and obviously the one right in the corner is Pokemon Go which is the most famous example of augmented reality um, that um, most people have had some experience with um, in the past. Um, increasingly, augmented reality is becoming really popular um, across a broad um, area of, you know, our lives. Um, in um, retail, it's becoming really, really widely used. 
um, as a way of trying before you buy. So you can virtually try things on from the comfort of your own home. So apps like Clearly or Sephora Artist, for example, allow you to try on products. Um, so with Clearly, you can try on glasses. With Sephora Visual Artist, you can try on lipstick. I recently was um, playing with the Tiffany website where you can try on jewellery, um, you know, without having to go into the actual store um, to, um, you know, purchase and see what, you know, might suit you. Um, we have apps like the IKEA app that also allows you to try um, furniture in your space. And that's really useful if you're looking at the size of things or colours and how that complements what you've already got. Um, one of the things that's become quite popular in Europe but really hasn't hit Australia yet, yet are these virtual fitting rooms. And you can see the Topshop um, AR door example. So in um, Europe, Topshop partnered with um, a, the company AR door and they used um, a connect um, motion sensing technology to create a virtual fitting room door for customers in their Moscow store. So um, basically that allows customers to stand in front of the camera, in front of the door and try on the latest range of clothing without physically having to try them on. So um, just another um, interesting way that augmented reality is being used in the real world. And Helen, I was Oh, just to add on to it, I love your examples as well, because they also show even with COVID, just, you know, when shops are closing down, these technologies are, are a way for customers to still be able to engage and, you know, have that experience of trying on glasses or, you know, a dress and something like that. So I was just talking to one of our colleagues, um, Tony, and she was saying how she couldn't get into the store to try her glasses, but she was able to use the online application. And it's just a really brilliant example of how important technology is to provide those access and opportunities. Yeah, definitely. We actually, are, we're renovating. So we've been using the IKEA app a lot um, and it's been really good because it's helped us pick our paint colours um, based on the sort of furniture that we've been thinking about getting. And we're like, oh, that, that kind of piece doesn't actually work with that colour. So it's a um, really great way of being able to, to do things. Um, some other really good examples are how AR and VR are used in healthcare, particularly for um, doctor education or healthcare workers. So we've got two examples here. So the first one is a tool called AccuVein. And AccuVein is, um, uses projection um, based VR technology to create almost like a laser that scans over um, the skin and allows um, healthcare workers to be able to identify um, the location of veins, um, the flow of blood, etc. This is particularly um, important. I have three young children, so I don't know if you've ever tried to take blood from a child. It's really, really, really difficult. And one of the reasons is that the veins are so small and they don't know if the vein that they're trying to get the blood out of has enough blood in it. So uh, this, this tool actually helps um, healthcare workers be able to identify where the best spot is to draw blood from, um, you know, or where the biggest blood flow is. I know it's also used to treat um, people that have uh, um, birthmark um, complications. Um, some of some birthmarks are related to veins, and so this particular tool has been really helpful for that. Um, the other one that's really quite interesting is the Microsoft HoloLens. So this is a Microsoft product and it's a head mounted display um, and it connects to an Xbox system and it allows medical students to learn about the human body and human anatomy using digital images and 3D models. So um, there's a video on the slide which we'll share um, as well at the end um, with um, Case Western Reserve University in, in America that partnered with Microsoft on the use of HoloLens as part of their um, anatomy project, anatomy subjects and biology subjects for first and second year medical students. And it's really quite fascinating to watch how they engaged with um, learning about anatomy and the human, the human body um, prior to actually um, working with the cadaver and also during COVID. So when students couldn't come onto campus um, they were still able to, you know, maintain their um, study from home and still learn the critical things that they needed to learn for, for their subjects um, 
using the Microsoft HoloLens. So quite an interesting um, video, only very short, it's only a two minute video, um, but definitely worth watching. And we might pop that in the chat um, as well. Um, so you can have a look at, at that one when you get a chance. Um, the next examples I'm gonna give you are um, more for patients um, or just, uh, I guess, regular people. So non-healthcare workers. So um, the one on the left, AED for, for you, is actually an app that's um, based in Norway um, and it uses um, maps and AR technology to be able to um, show the location of nearby defibrillators on your phone. So in, the, in a situation when you need access to one, you as a member of the public are able to know where those defibrillators are located um, how far they are, the best way to access those, etc. The other example is um, an app called I Decide, and that's actually used quite um, a lot in op uh, by optometrists and ophthalmologists, um, particularly around patient education of eye um, problems and and you know um, treatments and whatnot. So some really interesting examples um, in healthcare. Um, the other real world examples we've chosen to just share, and there are loads of them, but these are just some fun ones, are obviously your gaming. So things like Pokemon Go. Um, at the moment, it's all about Harry Potter Wizards Unite. That's all the rage. So similar to Pokemon Go, instead of catching Pokemon, you catch wizards. Um, and I actually took that photo at the front of my house, um, catching a wizard, and I had to explain to my mother what she was like, what are you doing? <laughs> So I'm like, I'm catching a wizard. <laughs> so that was an interesting conversation. Um, the one on the left, Tooth Fairy Camera, is one of my favourite apps. So um, as you can see, it um, simulates a tooth fairy over a sleeping child. Um, that is actually my sleeping child. So I used that um, on him the next day after he'd lost his tooth. He's at the age where he's starting to question things. I'm like, look, the tooth fairy, I've got a photo of her in your room. So um, quite a nice one. Rebecca, did you want to share the astronaut photo? Yeah, and just that, you know, many of many of the applications on, you know, Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat that add those layers over your face, you know, they're all using augmented reality combined with artificial intelligence. So the artificial intelligence is what is trying to recognize where your face is and move and track with your face. So we're seeing that, you know, these are being frequently used, you know, by adults and many students would have played around with these kinds of apps as well. Yes, definitely. Okay, did you want to talk through some of these, Rebecca? Yeah, so on the next slide, we thought, oh, we'd like to show you some opportunities where you can use existing AR apps to bring them into the classroom for learning and teaching. And you know, some of the other ones you've just seen may have been perfect as well. Um, but some we'd like to highlight is um, for AR and geography, you could use something like the WWF Free Rivers. Um, you know, this is a wonderful app. Uh, it, if you use it, it brings up, um, you navigate over a tabletop or, or a floor space, and then it brings up a, a landscape with a river. And so it puts the whole landscape in front of the students and then it provides that immersive experience where they're able, able to explore the environment. And through exploring how the river flows, they're able to see how the flow of the river affects people and wildlife and how you know, their homes depend on the river. And so it's a really nice way for students to you know, consider landscapes and then um, you know, use these technologies just to do that little bit of a deep dive and um, investigate. And so through this app, they can also collect stories about the people and the animals in the environment as well. So the one just below it is called Virtuality. Uh, this is one of my favourites. It's a t-shirt and uh, what it does is it has this uh, rib cage pattern on top of it. And that becomes your like your QR marker that helps your software um, recognize it. See, Helen's got one there um, with her. So you can see there are little codes there. And when you're using the app, it could be on a phone or an iPad or um, Android device, and it brings up your human system to life. And so this is really nice. Students can touch and investigate certain parts of the body 
and they can also dive a little bit deeper and go into a 360 ex immersive experience. So if they wanted to look further into the bloodstream, they can then use their camera or their device to look around the room and it actually means that they're looking inside the bloodstream. Um, so that one's a really fantastic app and you can actually test it on their website. So they have the code on their website and you can log in and just use your phone just to give a little try. And I've actually used that this little kid with our pre ks and our kindies that my school and with my own children and they absolutely love it. They, they're really engaged and they, they have quite interesting conversations. So while it does link really well to science and biology, I think as a, as a teacher, the talking and listening that comes from that, um, that stimulus is, is incredible. Yeah, they get to see it. Um, and it also, the heart is actually beating um, live. So you can sync it up with your own heartbeat as well. So you can, students can see it happening. And I think even for secondary students, if they're exploring, you know, biology and the way that the organs work, um, that could be a really great way just to sort of bring it to life. So it's not replacing anything, um, but it's sort of just providing that other um, form of media. And then we've also got AR and maths. So there are some tools like AR measurement tools that you can use. So, you know, you might be experimenting with different ways to measure. So using estimation or blocks and then rulers. And then you might also provide an AR tool as another way to um, measure. And this one is actually quite interesting because, you know, you could be on a, quite a strange angle, but it's still able to calculate, um, you know, the height of a cup or the, the length of a chair. And so it's, it's a really interesting one. And you can create, um, you can measure the area of a room and, you know, students could use it to, to do some planning or some mathematics. Um, in a sort of augmented way. We've also got AR space, um, AR and space. So the NASA website, they have an app with a whole range of spacecraft on there that you can um, download onto your iPad or your Android device and you can explore. And students can actually bring that into their actual physical environment. They can have photos next to spacecraft. They could be, you know, leaning down or they can just use it as a way to get up and up close and personal to the spacecraft and investigate, you know, um, what they look like. And then within the app, it provides information about the spacecraft characteristics and why they're designed that way to survive in certain conditions. So, you know, a space um, rover on Mars, they've um, designed it in specific ways to um, be within that climate. And then last, we've also got one, an example for English or drama, uh, which is Scene Cam. And Helen told me about this one. I don't know if you wanted to talk about it. So this one's a lot of fun. Um, I've used it with my stage two girls. And um, essentially, you can build a scene. So um, you take a photo in your space and you can add different elements to the scene. So you can have like bubbles or circles, like in the picture here, you can add text. You can add like crazy little characters and stuff and you can use it to tell a story um so they might have three components in their image and then the students might then use that to retell well, what's happening in this part of the story or what's happened to the character or something along those lines and um like i said it's one of those tools that um really really good not just for an engagement level but promoting that talking and listening um and then thinking about creative writing as well so um how um, students might, that might use it to visualise a, um, a text that they've, um, you know, been reading um, or bring to life a text that they've been writing themselves. Yeah. I'll move on to the next slide. On the, <coughs> sorry, the next one, if you happen to have downloaded it, um, we've got I recommend there are many different planets apps, um, stargazing apps, and these are fantastic for providing experiences in learning about planets and their movements, even in the daytime. So you don't have to be at night stargazing. You can actually do it during the daytime uh, using the guidance of this app. So one of the apps we selected to recommend that you might like to try is planets and um, it allows you to view those objects in our solar system. So you can actually see 
uh, the equator and you can see how the where the planets are positioned and you might post your students to find where Mars is and you know because it's daytime Mars is sitting underneath the earth and you can you can see that and so students can actually see how the planets are moving throughout the sky um, and you can also ask them to investigate um, you know just other aspects that are in the sky it could be used if you're if you have a telescope and you are doing um, night viewing you can use it as a way to guide you to help you find um, planets in the sky so I use it with my own telescope and it's it's become a tool just to help me as a novice novice astronomer um, and so I find it you know just these kinds of AR tools can actually be quite useful um, it's not replacing anything but it's helping me be able to find things in the night sky and then the next one we have um, which is Seek by iNaturalist. And this is another really interesting example because it uses artificial intelligence. And um, what this app does is, it, it, this version is actually a child-friendly version. So you can have it purely offline without needing to log in with an account. Um, the iNaturalist is the adult version that this is based on. And so what happens is people take photos of their environment. So uh, wildlife, you know, plants, animals, anything that they see, and it gets uploaded to a database. And then the artificial intelligence is looking at, you know, hundreds of thousands, um, even millions of images of all of the wildlife within your particular region. And it's classifying um, what it might be. And so when you use this app, it helps you identify um, things in your environment. So if you're not sure what a plant might be, you can hold the app up and it imposes the information, it overlays it on top of the plant and it's, you can see it guessing. So that's the computer vision in your artificial intelligence. Um, I just did a test run in my little veggie patch and it was, um, sometimes it works, sometimes it's not too sure. So it was guessing that my parsley was possibly carrots. But when you start to understand the artificial intelligence behind it, um, you can understand why it's making those guesses. But most of the time it will guess correctly. And so it becomes um, a tool that you can use with students to explore their environment, you know, go into the playground, you can um, collect different things that students are finding and then talk about classifying them, you know, what, uh, what families of um, species they come from. So that's a really beautiful example and I'd encourage you to have a little look at that one. All right. So we've actually been um, collecting some examples from lots of different people and we've put together a padlet um, um, of just different resources that people have used um, or different recommendations. I'm just going to click on the link so you can have a look and we will share this link in the chat um, and at the end as well. Um, can you see that up on the screen? Yeah. yeah. So um, as you can see, it's just a repository. Um, it's been um, contributed to by some people from ICTE um, NSW and um, obviously the CESA team and other people as well. So um, if you do have any um, apps that you've used um, please add it to, to the Padlet. Um, we're looking at this as a community repository of, um, you know, things that you can try um, with your students. There's even some PD examples. So we've got some um, links to videos by some of our other project officers on how you can create AR simulations or use merge cubes. Um, there's a, a link to printing your own merge cubes, some metaverse PD on here. Um, Mass Ninja is one that I've used a fair bit um, and it just um, puts um, some math sums in the um, environment and students can practice um, using those um, math sums. Picture Bird and Picture Bug are similar to um, the Seek um, app. In fact, I work um, with um, some people from Taronga Zoo um, as part of my school and one of the ladies is a third specialist. So um, one of her jobs is um, they've, they've connected with the people that created this picture bird app. And if there's a bird that can't be identified, so people might record a bird in their environment, send it up, send it through to the app, 
if the app can't identify it, it actually goes to a group of um, a specialist, a group of specialists, um, and they um, try and identify the bird from the claw. So that's quite a lovely one, um, particularly with young children. Um, I know in New South Wales we do um, look at stage uh, in stage two in the living world we look at birds. So that's quite a nice um, app to use there. So we will put this link in the chat. Um, and if you do have any um, resources that you would love to share, please do. Um, maybe we'll just give everyone a minute to have, oh, a, have a go at exploring that. I'm just going to pop that in the chat. Oh, I did that for you. Oh, you did? Oh, fabulous. Thank you. So we'll just give you a minute to explore. Um, there is another one on here that's um, worth talking about because it is quite, is it on here? Equivision is the one we talked about earlier where the students colour in and then use their colouring in sheet as the um, trigger for um, their augmented reality. Um, enter the room. Um, enter the room is, um, a Red Cross app and it's um, a fantastic way of um, uh, using a, an empathy task. I wouldn't use it with students lower than stage three, so I really would focus on year five and six and high school. Um, it's not gory, it's um, basically set in um, a country and um, you stand in a doorway and look in this child's room and it's absolutely beautiful to start with and over the course of five years you see how the room changes as a result of a war that has come to the child's country. So things like they suddenly use their beautiful bed frame to board up the window and things like that. So it, it can be quite um, distressing, I think. Um, and it's something that if you are going to use it with your students, then it will work really nicely if you're looking at war or texts like tomorrow when the war began. Um, if you, if you are going to use it, it would be really good to have that conversation with the students afterwards about, um, you know, what happened to the child, why was all of that happening, you know, what sort of emotions might, might we be feeling in that situation. Okay, I think we'll move on. Okay, so uh, like looking at any um, tool, technology tool, we always link back to the curriculum. And um, when we're looking at VR and AR, we need to think about it in terms of teaching digital technologies and also as ICT capabilities. So in relation to digital technologies, um, VR can be used to explore digital systems, particularly hardware and components, how data is represented and transmitted and how networks um, connect together to, to transmit that data. You can also look at it in relation to as an ICT capability. So investigating this technology or communicating this technology and creating this technology. So um, with, within this scope, we're looking at how students select and use hardware and software, how they understand how ICT systems work, how they manage digital data. And ultimately, as they, as they move through the curriculum, we want them to start creating more and more with um, technology and with augmented reality. Did you want to add anything, Rebecca? Yes, yeah, so, so just thinking about even looking at existing technologies, thinking about why they're created and thinking about the selection of the right tools. So when we think about the opportunities that digital technologies provides is you're usually trying to solve a problem. For example, the case of the AR, um, dressing room it's it's trying to solve you know making processes more efficient so you don't have to get all your clothes off and try things on it's um allowing you know higher customer turnover um, in the case of uh, some of the medical examples helen went through you know they're using ai as a technology to try and solve a specific problem so the beauty of the digital technologies curriculum is it has that room there where students can think about you know how they select different technologies for different purposes and why are people are creating these technologies, like what, what problems are they solving, which then leads into them thinking about their own solutions. So coming back to that creating design solutions, like Rebecca said, so thinking about what sort of solutions can we 
create what sort of materials, equipment and components can we use to help us design our solutions? Um, how can our solutions be used to communicate ideas um, or to be safe and effective? Okay. In terms of down the track, um, one of the things that we do highlight in our MOOC is um, careers that our students can go into. And being an emerging field of industry and education, um, these are obviously going to change um, and grow and expand um, in time. But these are just two really interesting ones that we wanted to highlight where we, um, where students are aware, where people are using these sort of AR skills in these AR careers. So one being an augmented reality designer and what an augmented reality designer does is work within um, a variety of different industries to create AR experiences. So it could be some of those healthcare examples that we were looking at for patient education or doctor education or um, healthcare work for education. It could be um, for government organisations and agencies to develop um, you know, consumer understanding um, of um, products or services or, or um, policies and structures. Um, Another field that's um, really um, expanding at the moment is XR researchers or user experience researchers of particularly um, augmented reality and mixed reality. So what a XR researcher would do would be look at where um, a AR experience um, has been created or needs to be created and what that experience needs to feel like for the user. Um, what's the goal of that experience and how to best create an experience that, that meets that goal, solves that problem or um, educates that user. Did you want to add anything, Rebecca? Uh, just, I guess that students, if they understand these technologies and how they're designed and created, uh, regardless of whatever career that they choose to go into, they can take these ideas and understandings about um, creating AR to solve certain problems. So, you know, they could be working in uh, a medical centre and thinking about, you know, the next AR solution or perhaps in an education environment and how they could harness the AR technology. So there's lots of roles for AR to play in all different kinds of industries. And then when we think about um, con students creating their own content, um, research has found that engaging students in STEM projects has been enhanced by teachers using um, engineering processes as a scaffold or something like design thinking. So um, by adopting something like a design thinking process, which is found in the digital technologies curriculum, you're, guide, you're setting up a structure and framework for students to work through from helping them identify a problem or a situation where they could create a solution for through to um, coming up with ideas and then thinking about how they might go about um, testing, like developing an early solution to test with a user. So it could be their peer or a family member um, and then and then iterating. So it's not about being right or wrong the first time, but these kinds of structures help students realize that, you know, there's a testing process and that there's that feedback loop. And so students working through this um, start to feel like an engineer or they start to feel like a computer scientist. And so, um, you know, even using the language of calling them um, computer scientists or technologists um, can even further enhance that process. And so these these become quite a nice way to scaffold your units um, or your lesson plans around those elements of design thinking or computational thinking um, or even engineering processes. So with that in mind, we, are, we do um, encourage um, students to really create with technology and um, we don't shy away from getting them to build their own AR spaces, even from little. Um, so some of the um, apps that we've got on here are things that you can use in the classroom with your students as young as about you too, um, to create their own AR experiences. And some are obviously more complicated than others, um, and some are more suited to um, different types of experiences that you want to create. Um, 
the one on the um, right over here is Merge Thing. So that works with the Merge Cube and that lets um, students build um, on the Merge Cube using these like almost like Minecraft type blocks. Um, so I've, I've actually used this with my Year 3 girls um, when we were looking at Storytime STEM and we were working with the text Row, Row, Row Your Boat. The girls use Merge Things to design a um, and build a boat in augmented reality um, to save the characters in the story who um, ended up um, almost drowning because their boat sunk. So that's quite a nice one. Tinkercad is one that's been around for a while and that actually translates really nicely with Minecraft and other platforms. So students and 3D printing as well. So students can create something um, and then superimpose it in a different way. Um, similar with Sketchfab and Code Spaces um, is probably the most complicated of the ones on this particular screen here. Um, but again, allows students the opportunity to work and create their own um, AR experiences. Um, within Code Spaces, you can create a AR experience for the Merge Cube. So that would be quite um, a, an interesting kind of task if you've used Merge Cube for um, just participating in experiences up until say year five and then then you can um, charge your students with the opportunity to create their own experiences after that um, and through Carter one of our um, wonderful project officers has done quite a bit in that um, space and um, on that padlet you'll find some links to some of her um, webinars where she talks about using code spaces and creating um, a, a space in merge or merge cubes with code spaces. All right, with that in mind, I wanted to introduce Metaverse, but before we go on, are there any questions in the, in the chat? I can't really see the Q&A. I'll just see if I can get it up. Okay. It doesn't look like there are questions. If you have any questions at all, um, or even suggestions that you'd like to make around AR technology, feel free to put it into the chat and we can um, share that. Or you can take your microphone off and you're welcome to just ask a question as well. Okay. All right, I might go on. So we'll probably talk for another five, 10 minutes. I'll just give you a little bit of an introduction to Metaverse and then um, I'll get you to walk through creating a Metaverse experience with me. So Metaverse is an augmented reality app. Um, it's free for um, educators. So as an educator, you can create a, an account um, and then use that account um, to create um, interactive content in um, augmented reality. Um, it is used a lot in marketing and in education um, and gives you, it's quite easy actually. Um, I was a little bit, um, concerned to have to, to try and use it. I thought it would be really complicated, um, but it's not. And I can actually see um, how I'm going to use this with my students. It's, it's quite easy to use. So we'll just play this little video. I'm not going to play all of it just to give Your you. Your app is the number one favorite. The first time I introduced Metaverse to my students, I was hesitant on what they were going to think about it and that they were going to be interested in it. When they walked in, I told them that they needed to get out their personal devices, so they were instantly hooked. And I say, time for Metaverse, and like, oh, is that the thing? I like that, that's the one. And so we had all these people in the room, they really wanted to see it because they thought it was really neat. I did not tell them what it was going to do. I just put the QR code up and I sent them to scan it, and then someone lifted the iPad up for the first time. And real quick, like, you know, quick second of like, gotcha. And all of a sudden, like, whoa. Oh, what was that? And there were squeals everywhere. It was so fantastic. Kids were up and moving and spinning around the room. And then as I was chasing them through the hallways, because they were so excited about the scavenger hunt, they were on to find the QR codes. I realized it was a a year changing tool. They're learning and they don't even know that they're learning. Okay. So I just wanted to give you a really brief introduction um, just to, they're all real teachers. I'm very American, but very real teachers that, um, have all used Metaverse really um, fantastically in their classroom. And I've got some great um, resources down the track on things that they created and used with their students. 
So um, we actually set up our own little metaverse experience just to give you a little bit of a taste. Um, this didn't take very long to set up at all. It was probably like a 10, 15 minute um, experience. Um, in order to access the metaverse experience, you do need the metaverse app. And then when you're in the app, you can just click um, scan the code and then scan the QR code, or you can use the direct link to access the experience. Um, has anyone had a go at playing with the experience? Yeah, okay, that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll share it out again. Um, it was just to give you a little bit of a taste of how Metaverse works and how easy it is to really create your own content and use your own pictures and your own logos. This is a very Caesar-centric experience. As you can tell, we've got our photos up, we've got our logo up. Um, you can link to web pages. So um, in this experience, we've linked back to the Caesar web page. So um, you can see how it can, it's quite interactive and engaging and you can make it very appropriate for your students. So what sort of experiences can you create on Metaverse? You can use any of these here. So you can do quizzes through multiple choice questions. Um, you can get students to do text responses, um, polls, um, AR scavenger hunt. So one of the teachers in the video was talking about how she used Metaverse to do an AR scavenger hunt in her school um, with her students. Um, and again, it's an experience you as a teacher can create, or you can encourage your students to create as well. Um, interactive stories, um, you can do your own 360 experiences with them as well. Um, photo wars, audio games, like it just goes on and on. And one of the things I really like about Metaverse is there's a lot of um, support out there to create these experiences. And I'll direct you to where you can find that um, as well. So you can use Metaverse across this um, curriculum. And this is one of the things that I quite like because it is very versatile. Um, it's something that you can um, create an experience when you're working with younger children, um, probably about a five minute experience. Um, I created one for my children. Um, I have a seven, five and four year old um, and they were quite engaged and it was easy and I didn't have to use glasses or anything like that and they were able to engage with the experience that way. Um, when you're working with say this middle year, um, you can create experiences for your students or if they're older middle year, so um, stages three and up, you can be encouraging them to create their own experiences. And then with um, upper high school, um, you, I would focus on just using them to create their own experiences um, and really looking at um, using the media and, multi and multimedia and elements of coding um, as part of those experiences as well. So um, these are the, some of the um, examples that you can try. Um, and I like that they're broad, so they do cover the various different um, curriculum areas. So you've got some English stuff here with um, the, the particular Bottom Bird essay um, experience. You've got some things around um, space and planets with Cosmos for Kids. Um, I probably wouldn't do the Escape the Zombies experience unless you're working with um, Year 11, maybe. Um, I have heard of students that use that kind of, uh, schools that use that kind of theme with upper high school um, to explore things like ethics um, and, and, you know, um, social fabrics, um, but I, I wouldn't probably with younger children, but some of the others there are fantastic and give you really good examples of what you can do with the platform um, and how you can link it back to your curriculum. So it's actually really easy to make a metaverse experience. It's, it's five steps. It's these five steps. You click on create experience, you click on add new, um, you pick the sort of experience that you want to do, you set up your scenes and then you publish it. Once it's published, you get a QR code and you also get a link and that's what you share out with your um, students or um, participants in order for them to access the experience. So I'm just gonna stop sharing here and I'm gonna pull up my metaverse to show you how easy it is to make an experience. Rebecca, did you wanna add anything or are there any questions?
Um, not really, just that if you have a chance to try it with Helen as she's going through, I really recommend it. Um, when I was creating some metaverse examples for our Caesar lending library, um, it was just so exciting, like as the teachers are explaining, to see what you've created in your physical environment on your in augmented reality. So I think if you yeah go through that process, it looks a little complicated um, when you're seeing it um, the way that it's designed. But once you have a go at trying, it, it just makes things much clearer. Yeah. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to get my metaverse up and dragged over here. Okay. Can you see my metaverse screen? So it should say metaverse in the top left hand corner. My experiences. Can you see that? Or did I pick the wrong window? Yep, I can see. Fabulous. Okay, so this is um, what your account looks like. Now, one of the things I really like about Metaverse is um, right on your homepage, it, there's videos and PD to help you um, create experiences. So if you're not too sure how to do something, it's there. Um, there's a lot of support, there's a lot of scaffolding, um, and that makes it easier for you um, as the teacher to play and then teach on to your students. Um, as I scroll down, you can see these are the lists of my experiences. So I've got a multiple choice game. I've got a, a cat um, experience. That's one I created for my children because they love cats. Um, along the top, I've got access to their blog and their forum. So I can ask questions or read articles. There's a tutorials link. So when you do click on that tutorials link, it does take you to the um, Metaverse YouTube channel. And within that YouTube channel, there's just video after video on how to do different things, how to you know incorporate characters, how to make 360 scenes, how to make those media wars, those poll scenes, etc. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click on my experiences and I'm going to click on create an experiences experience, which is in the top corner over here. You can see it's creating, it's opening, and then this is what my um, dashboard looks like. So with my metaverse um, experience, you have a, um, a card. So this thing here is a card or it's a scene. And the scene is broken up into three different elements. There's a box at the top here, and that's where you can add dialogue. The circle in the middle is where you can add a character and at the bottom you can add a button. So I'm going to start by adding a um, dialogue. So I might just click on that box and type the word hello. So if you want to create your experience and then start by adding that dialogue, that hello, and it's simply clicking on that box and typing the word hello. Um, you might even want to elaborate it and say hi. something really simple like that and then to save that text I simply just need to click out so now you can see I've got that dialogue there you can um, also um, click on that save button and now that's saved there now I want to actually add a character into this circle here so I don't just see the words hello my name is Helen I want to see an image or a character that goes with that text so in order to do that, again, I just click on that circle and it opens up a, um, a menu of different characters that I can add. So I could use one of the um, characters that come in the Metaverse library. So you can see there's loads and loads of loads of them here. Lots of cats I found. Um, interesting like characters or people like Alfred Hitchcock. And these are just 2D kind of images. If I wanted something a little bit more 3D, um, I can click on these 3D poly and you can see how I can add in a fish tank or a fox or an, another cat um, or another fox. Um, I might see, let's do the tree. Uh, 
let's do the Christmas tree. So I've selected that and you can see it's imported that um, particular character into my spot there. Now I can also add a button for my experience. So I might even add to my text, click next to the um, what happens in the toy. So I've given some dialogue to my user, I've given them a character, now I'm going to add a button that, um, that's the next button. So I click on that button option and you can see it's come up with a, an, a, an arrow. Um, I can, over on the left, uh, on the right here, I can modify that. So I can, instead of having just the arrow, I can write the word next and that appears on my button. I can... If I don't want to have um, words, I can have an image instead, and then I can choose an image. Again, I can use one um, that's already in the library, or I can add my own. And so if I click on add a character, I can upload an image, and I might think, um, where's the B? Oh, here we go. Add to the button. And you can see now that image has placed itself on the button. So this is my first page of my experience. So I've had some dialogue to introduce the experience. I've got an image there um, that my audience can interact with. And I've got an instruction and the instruction is click next. I'm now going to add another card or another um, um, singing. So I just do that by um, simply pressing add new and then when I add new it takes me to the menu where I can select what sort of scene that I want to add. So I can add in another character scene which is what we've just made. I can do a web view scene so that's where I can direct my audience to a particular website. I can um, add a YouTube video so my audience can be directed to a particular YouTube video that I want them to um, watch. Um, I can have a text input scene so I might ask um, a question and then my audience has to respond to that with some text. I can do a poll or a wall where I could have lots of different images on there. I might just do a text um, input scene. Um, and you can see now what's happened is I've got a keyboard on my screen where my audience can type a response. So I might click on my dialogue at the top um, and I might ask um, a question, what is your name? And then that allows the audience to answer. Now what I need to do is make sure that I link between my scenes so that what happens is my experience starts here and then needs to continue on there. And to link between scenes, it's really, really simple. You actually just need to click on this orange circle there and that's your transition to scene control. So once you've clicked on that, over here on the right hand side, you can see I've got my transition to control. Now you can um, manually do, do it this way, but the easiest thing to do is click on this circle and then click on the next thing. And you can see now I've had a scene transition um, in the form of a connection. So my scene will start with this front image and then move on to the what is your name image. If I wanted to change the Christmas tree image on my second slide or my second scene, um, I can just again click on that, click on the edit um, button and I can pick anything else that I want or I can add my own um, character um, to the experience. So, you know, it might be I want my children to, you know, explore Dolly, the tech. So I might write Dolly. And so then instead of what is your name, have you read this book? Are there any questions so far, Rebecca? Um, not at the moment. Okay, so I'll keep going. Um, and what you're doing there is it's a really good example of students thinking about input and output. So 
they're thinking about the user actually interacting with their application by using that um, text entering box as well, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And again, it's, you can see it's really easy to build these experiences. And when you click on add new, there are so many there. Mm. Um, the one I've been playing with recently has been the poll and the war scene. Um, so if you're not sure exactly how to do that, how to create a poll scene, if you go back into their um, tutorials, there it is there, there's a video and they, they very clearly outline how to use the poll scene, how to create an experience with the poll scene. Um, so just front loading you with that platform information that you as then as a teacher can go off and, and um, apply and use and modify for your context. Yeah. Um, the videos are excellent and you can have you know your older students self-directing their learning so yeah. if they have a particular design that they want to do um, they can look through those videos that they're, they're within the actual metaverse environment as well so they don't have to go on out to another external site but you can also sh see it just from YouTube but they're really excellent support um, videos as well yeah okay I might so I'm mindful of time. I might just quickly show um, everyone how to do things like, say I wanted to change the background color. So right now it's a, it's a blue kind of color, but I'm gonna, let's just make it, well, I've made my bus button pink, but I wanna make my background pink as well. Um, so I need to click on the background. And then, background, there we go. So now it's that grey colour, but I want to make it something a little bit more fun. And it's just a matter of playing with the platform and getting it in the right spot. The other thing is you can add another button. So say I wanted a different option. So I might have a, a button that's another image. And then I can link that button to a different card. So let's go to upload page. Um, let's just drop this. There's the hard. Do I have the easy button? No, I don't. That, for example. Okay. So now you can see I've got my second image and I might add a new character scene. And what I can do is link that to this scene. So if the, if the user clicks on the micro bit button, it will take them to this scene here. If they click on the hard button, it will take it to that scene there. So again, thinking about your inputs, outputs and user experience. Um, if you're creating some kind of quiz um, activity, um, that's um, a nice way to do it, a nice way to introduce that branching as well um, with students. So now say I'm happy with this, I want to test it out. I'm going to click on the test button and you can see it opens up a QR code and a, um, a, a link. So what I would do is scan the, this code with my Metaverse app and it gives me the opportunity to test it out in um, augmented reality and then make any modifications that I need to um, to my, um, my experience. Mm -hmm. The other thing I can do is when I'm happy with it and I'm, I'm ready to go and share it with the world, obviously I'd need to name it and you can see it just says Untitled Experience, so just name test one. And if you hit publish, you can add a description, you can, um, you know, decide how you're going to share it, what your colour front image is. There we go. My pink that I was looking for. Do I want it to be cloned? Um, I can obviously block it off so no one can claim my experience. Once I'm happy with my um, settings, I click publish and it gives you your um, QR code and your share link. Um, uh, link and you can also um, embed it by using the embed code that it provides as well. Any questions? Um, is there an option for an offline use of Metaverse? Um, 
not that I know, but because you're sharing the code and the QR code and the link, it's really, it's not publicly available on like a, a website or library of this. So you can lock it down by making sure that only some people access it. I think even if you go into your share settings or your publish settings in your advanced, you can do it as an unlisted or as part of a group. So if you've got a group of students that are um, on the Metaverse Classroom um, side of things, and you can just share it with that, that class or that GPF location or something along those lines, or only the people with the link or QR code can find the experience. So that really locks it down um, so that they're not public mm -hmm. experiences. And then the second question was, is there an option to download it on the phone and use it offline? So that AR experience? Um, I'm not sure. Publish. I think it might need the internet. Yeah, I think because it is that it, it is cloud based and using that augmented reality, I think it does need the internet. Um, and a really great way is, you know, you might start by scaffolding students through a specific task like Helen's done. So you might um, create a little uh, AR experience that students can follow just to sort of get used to the platform and the features. And then when students start to think about their own AR creations, you know, what are they going to design? Is it something for the school um, community? Is it to help people um, you know, make better health decisions or is it to educate them about planets in the solar system? So you might have students think about what they want to create, um, but because you've got this open canvas, it can become quite tricky with lots of layers of um, branching and things like that. So using something like a template, kind of like you would in storyboarding, can really help students, you know, it might be um, paper prototyping. So perhaps they have little cards and they can shuffle them around, but encouraging them to sort of map out what their metaverse experience is going to be. It doesn't have to be perfect, but yeah. just the general goal. Start small as well, and then you can always add layers. Um, yeah. So encourage students to engage in that um, computational thinking process where they're breaking down the logic. So what are those logical steps? How would a user navigate through their app? Because um, otherwise they might get to a roadblock where there's not there's no um, particular purpose for them to go into a, a scene. Um, yeah. So you're thinking about what is it that you're doing behind um, the AR app as well. And you could start with, like Rebecca said, if you've created an experience. So what I might do is use this multiple choice experience and use it as a teaching point with my students. So we talk about, well, this is what's going to happen first or what's the next thing that's going to happen. And then what happens after that? And they might even flow chart that out so that they get used to that idea of how the an experience flows. Um, and I, I always, um, whenever I get my students to create any digital product, whether it's um, something like this, whether it's a scratch game or micro beats program, I get them to map it out first. I get them to storyboard it. I get them to do, do a flow chart, um, switch it with another a student, get that student to read over it, to explain it to them, do like an elevator pitch of how your program is going to work and get all of that feedback and get it clear um, in their heads what they're going to do before they even start playing with the, the technology. And that's a process that, you know, technologists use when they're designing things. They're often having quite you know rigorous design processes before they even jump into using their software uh, and then after you can think thinking back to that design thinking process you've got testing and so you take your app back to the user uh, and it could be peers in the classroom like Helen said they swap um, apps they could test them using a rubric perhaps as a class you've come up with you know what does a successful app experience look like um, you know, what are the elements that you would like to see in an AR experience? And you can have students sort of do that peer review, you know, making sure everything functions right and as expected. Um, and usually in user testing, you might have a set of specific tasks that you give someone. So it could be, you know, um, uh, respond to the quiz or, or navigate to this point or find the information about 
um, you know, the starfish. And so you're trying to give tasks that enable full access to that app. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, I found some of the best um, uh, programs my students have created it has been after they've had that feedback and user testing. And we've even had parents do user testing on some of the programs my, my students have created. And they were able to come back and go, I didn't really think about that part of my, my code or how my game worked or something along those lines. So um, that's super important to build into um, creating any digital experience. Yeah. And it's a different type of culture you're thinking, you're letting students know that it's not about being perfect, it's actually about um, their skills in trying to find the bugs and fix them yeah. and thinking about how they can always improve and iterate. Yeah, definitely. I might stop sharing so we can, because I'm mindful of time and I know we just want to go through um, where people can access some resources and um, other information. So I'm just going to share this screen now. So we should be back in the slideshow, is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so um, like I said, it's, it's very step by step and it's the sort of program that you just need to play with a little bit. And once you've created one or two experiences, um, it's quite easy to do. And these are all the things that I just looked you through. So adding a character, adding a button, linking between your scenes or your transitions. Um, this is quite a complicated example, so I probably wouldn't use this as a teaching point with, with um, students, or I might use only half of it, but it's a good way of introducing that idea um, and then sharing your experience. Now, the other thing that we um, had was um, just created another way of, you, of how you can or your students can create an AR space and share it, and that's using Newpod. So Newpod is a platform that's very similar to Google Slides, but does allow for extra interactivity and um, augmented um, reality experiences. So I've just, um, we've created just a really simple one and it's easy to um, connect to a Newpod. You simply go to the address join.newpod.com and then you enter in the code, which is F-U-M-S-W. Um, and what that will do is it will create, it will send you to a self-paced um, new pod course that we've created and um, the course is simply three or four different um, interactive augmented experiences um, around the theme space um, that your students can do um, or you can do for your students. Um, I've been teaching my U4 students with new pod um, over the last term and they've really enjoyed the interactivity that Newpod allows and the access to the 3D, uh, 360 experiences and their um, interactive augmented experiences. And we will share these codes again at the end so you can explore them in your own time. Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca, did you want to just walk through the lending library? Yeah, I'll just quickly touch on these. So if you go to our um, CESA MOOCs website, so cesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au, uh, we have a lending library program and so you can go there and have a look at what's on offer. It's free for schools to, it's funded through the Australian Government Department of Education um, and Employment and Skills and at the moment uh, it's funded until the end of 2020 with some extended funding for AR and VR equipment. Um, and so at the moment we have Merge Cube kits which, um, you know, we send you out a kit of merge cubes that you can use in your classroom. Our kits come with lesson plans and you can also request iPads as well. So Helen's just holding up a merge cube there. They're very, they're light, they're tangible, they're really easy. You can use them across um, a range of different year levels from the little leagues, uh, up until, you know, even high school, they could still engage and use it in some way. We also have a giant one. <laughs> Helen has made a giant merge cube, which you can do. Which is great for um, whole class experiences. Yeah. Uh, we also have some other kits, so mixed kits. We've thrown in lots of exciting AR experiences like the virtuality tea. 
We've got some books with AR that just sort of show you the possibilities of things that you can do with augmented reality. And there's um, also iPads in there to support you. And we've got some, we've got a space kit with things like little planets. So they're actually like little 3D planets that come to life and you can explore and learn about those planets with augmented reality. We also have a virtual reality kit. So if you're interested in this emerging technology space uh, and you want to also expect dabble in virtual reality, we have some um, Oculus Quest as well as the Google Cardboards and the Daydream headsets that you can request at the moment. And if you're, um, we've also got some just an additional support for teachers around guides. So we don't have a MOOC particularly attached to our AR and VR experiences, but we do have some quick guides and they're all on our resources page. So we've got um, an introduction to AR, VR and emerging tech that you can download and remix and um, perhaps share it with your staff um, colleagues. And we've also got classroom usage guides. So thinking about those does, um, factors when you know, safe and appropriate and responsible use of these technologies. Um, we also have, so even if you're not, not um, wanting to loan something through our lending library, we do have lesson plans on our uh, Caesar Moots le lending library page. So if you see something and you're interested, you can have a look at the lesson plans that are on offer and see if that fits within your classroom you're welcome to download and remix them as well. And we also have created some a resource for families or something that you might want to try in the classroom, which um, you can download from our resources page. And Helen's also put together some links to resources that support this presentation. So, you know, if you're quite keen around the Padlet, augmented reality with Merge, Nearpod, she's popped all those links in there and that will be emailed out with um, our follow-up email. Okay. Um, and also we've touched on topics like artificial intelligence. We've been talking about digital technologies curriculum. We have a range of massively open online courses, which you're welcome to join. And they cover all of these topics. Our latest ones are in cybersecurity and awareness. And this does relate to AR as well, because we're thinking about you know, safe internet use, we're thinking about appropriate use of um, apps and thinking about the data that we're exchanging on these apps. And so combining that with cybersecurity and awareness um, and creating these AR experiences a really nice combination there as well. As well as the artificial intelligence, some of these AR experiences are using that technology. So these um, MOOCs break down that content and make it really clear, easy for you to explain to students and provide those example lesson plans. And then that brings us to the end of the session. So if you have any um, questions or comments, we're happy to take them. Um, and we'd love for you to keep in touch as well. We're on Twitter, so at Caesar Adelaide. We're also just recently on Instagram if you're on there. So Caesar Adelaide on Instagram, and we also have a Facebook page. So we might stop recording there and then we can just take our questions offline. Does that sound all right? I'm gonna stop share.